Hey Acers, glad to see you again. I am coming to you on Sunday the 11th of September and I am just glad to be here with you and be talking role-playing games and the cool things that come from it. So first of all, um, I wanted to just throw this out there. I had some business cards made for Fanex coming up at the end of the month. And it has our ACE logo. And it's the way for people to be able to create their own ACE clubs. Because that's part of what this whole ACE role-playing games thing is about. And as you can see, ACE, of course, stands for Achieve, Create, and Entertain. Achieve, Create, and Entertain. There you go. Anyway. I am going to be handing about, I'm going to hand out as many of these as I possibly can during the FanX convention, hand them out at the gaming tables, because we are looking for more teens to set up their own Ace Role Playing Games clubs. And that's what this channel is all about. It's about sharing with you guys the opportunity to be able to make your own stories and to be able to tell your own tales, and be able to have a fun time doing it. Of course, we use, not sponsored, Savage Worlds as the introductory game engine for any of the people out there who, want to, who don't know how to game master yet and would like to learn. And I will put my email address down below in the comments, where, or in the, in the description part of the video, where you can get a hold of me and I can start helping you to follow the ACE rules to set up your own club. And that includes the fun effort of getting an adult to sponsor the club. I'm that grown up for my local club and my daughter and other teens are part of that club. And we just want to grow this now. We want to turn this into, and, and, if you don't, you want to use Savage Worlds. If you if you're comfortable with D&D, bring it in. But we want to grow this with all role playing gamers and all role playing games, and have role playing game meetings all the time for teens to be able to game and and be able to even set up their own groups for after outside of the club for like doing sleepovers and stuff like that. That's I mean that's how I did it when I was a teen, and that was part of the probably one of the best things out there. So anyway, if you have any questions, you want to set up a club, contact me at the email below. I will be more than happy to answer your questions and help you get your own ACE club set up. Because remember, we're gaming for good. So that said, I wanted to talk a little bit about my gaming escapades this week and where I made a mistake or I have made a mistake on kind of letting Savage Worlds do some of the lifting for me that I really should have been doing myself. And that is, I'm pretty good at, I'm pretty good at game preparation, but I'm not. I, got, I can kind of get lazy sometimes. And if I'm running something where I suddenly need a, antagonist or a group of antagonists i am more than happy to um i'm more than happy to just pull up a stat block make them all sixes that they have in their attributes and give them a d6 and something they're good at and maybe a d8 and something they're really good at so if they're they're a, a street thug or something i might give them a d6 in fighting and a d8 and shooting or maybe just give them two d6s and shooting and fighting and give their leader a d8 in shooting so that way he's one step better than his men and that's it and sometimes i can not prepare as much as i should and i really should get better at preparation and so i'm going to I'm going to make a video about preparation. I'm going to write that down so that way I don't forget because frankly, 
these ma minds that we have are designed to forget. Because, I mean, how sucky would that be to remember every single breath you take during the day? No, 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 no. You want to be able to let your brain forget its memories and hold on to the important ones. So I'm going to do a, right now that I need to do a preparation video. Okay, written. So that said, oh, I used a cool purple marker. In, 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 yes, this is a friction marker, so I'm not sponsored by that by by Pilot either. But friction markers, I use those in my again not sponsored by Fusion Rocket Book for things that you're not going to need to really keep around, or you can go ahead and digitize quick. That's a tool that you might want to look into picking up. They're about 30 bucks, so they're not inexpensive, but they're not too expensive either. And that's a, and that's a, that's a tool that makes it so you can just write down what you want to get to and what you need to remember right then and there. And the fusion version of it, um, gives you, it gives you, um, calendars and, pl and planners and everything like that. It, it's a pretty spiffy tool. And when I find tools like that, I will definitely recommend them. I, um, this last Thursday, though, ran a game, East Texas University, and I decided to run the plot, and I'm not, I'm running the plot point campaign, Degrees of Horror. And I decided to go for one of the savage tales of cool voodoo, or I think that's what it's called, but I'm not going to switch screens because I don't want to lose the stream here or the, the video here. So anyway, but it, it's one where you get the, the team is investigating. Oh, and just, I'll, I'll put in a little note here, a spoiler alert kind of thing. If you ever play degrees of horror and your game master runs this, then don't use player knowledge and enjoy the, enjoy the ride. So anyway, the, couple brothers bought a real shrunken head that's got a real curse on it um at the pawn shop in town and they were and they used it to try and or to just play a prank on a on a, a, a prank on one of these guys and he's in the and it awakens zombie mike and he actually is going to start being self-destructive and destroy himself and stuff and your players have to try and stop zombie mike by destroying the head well my players got the head only an hour and a half into the session or, or just an hour into the session i i demurred i dragged my feet i tried not to let it go too out of control but it was it was out of control and um i was looking at an at ending almost an hour early so i was like nope i'm gonna throw in a wrench here and so i had them take the head to to glenn mack the professor who knows about the Oogie Boogie things and everything like that. And just kind of their mentor and coach and everything like that. I had him take that to him. And in turn, he said that they had to do a ritual. And I was now starting to get ready to bring them back into the main plot point campaign. The next step, um, I had him take it to the, to the gym at, of the, of the right now torn down um, Raven's roost. And they were going, they were going to, and, then to turn up the heat a little, I had Zombie Mike show up, and he's trying to get the head, so he can continue being the, so the head this curse can continue to turn him into something that would be a really bad thing for the characters to meet again later on. But they they were doing the ritual, and this will mean that they can be haven't been exposed to ritualism. They can take it as a skill in the next level and the next advance because i gave them an advance they took their midterms and each got to roll their their skill like, with a zero modifier and it worked really well they all passed their exams and they all had something good happening during the time of passing their exams so things went pretty well but then during this ritual um they had to roll smarts minus two and then i drew a club first thing out and so i'm like okay you gotta you you got to roll now smarts minus four. And because of that, nobody could help Glenn Mack. Glenn Mack was doing a 
a banishment spell on the head because I decided that's going to be the spell that's needed to get rid of the the possessing entity and destroy the and destroy the shrunken head, and he ultimately crit failed on a club. So I randomly rolled on the on the crit failure table, and he turned into a rabbit along with one of the other characters. And the, the other character, he said, I grab the shrunken head by the hair and take off as a rabbit. And so they had to drag it through the salt circle, which is the only thing protecting them from Mike. Oh, and earlier when they met Mike the first time, one of the player characters, he had wrestled him into the ground and it, it, he'd done perfect on his athletics roles. And I'd failed perfectly on Mike's athletics roles. And so Mike ended up bounded and entangled and they clocked him and he came out of it. But this time, Shane goes out there to try and stop him, and Mike hauls back and slugs him so hard that he did 27 points of damage to him, and he dropped him, and he was bleeding out. And now this is the cliffhanger. Instead of ending early, I ended on a cliffhanger as to how these guys are going to get out of this mess next time. And it was great. It was one of my best sessions yet. In four years I'm in my fifth year of game mastering now and in four years this has been one of my best sessions that I can remember I mean I don't know what my players are saying about it outside of here but I know what I'm saying about it and I'm having I had a great time and this goes to show that even though yes we do want our players to win we want our PCs to survive and be successful but you know what at the same time, they, I mean, now Shane, the, the player character for my friend Pat, uh, for my, my friend Patrick, um, Shane is in trouble because his whole concept is about being kind of a bodybuilder and being tough. And he just took, because that wound hit him so hard, he took a permanent injury on the on the table. And he's lost a permanent point of strength. He's going to have to use an advance to get back up. And that's just, that's going to set him back. And it's, it was a fun thing because things went wrong. And that's the lesson for me is that I've got to let things go wrong. I have to let things be bad. And let my players figure out how they're getting out of it. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a blast. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they respond to this. And this is why I, again, love the way Savage Worlds handles so much of this. So um, that's the main thing I wanted to talk about. And yes, when it comes for preparation, and this it's a good thing that I had read this adventure before. And I knew the basics of what was happening. I had to refer back to it a couple of times, but I didn't slow down the action. So I guess this kind of can be my preparation video, just as I as I get ready to sign off. Um, preparation. Don't be over prepared. You don't want to plot out the entire encounter. Think of it as an encounter, not as a story, because. The thing is, is that your players are going to make it the story. And because of the bad dice rolls and the, the failures, and even though I was using Glenn Mac just on my side, I was rolling for Glenn Mac, which I probably should have handed off to them. And I probably will hand him off to them for the next, for the next bit as they're, as Glenn Mac and, um, and Jimmy are rabbits. And, um, I'm just going to let, let them kind of run it. And I'm just going to run the antagonists. Zombie Mike's going to be chasing them as fast as he can, but he's, I think he's got a slower pace because he's zombie. But that's just kind of... <laughs> that's the thing about preparation. You want to have maybe a few notes, know what's going to happen, and design it according to an encounter. It does not become a story until the players apply themselves to it. because 
you will have the greatest if you overplot if you overplan i can promise you you're not going to have fun because the moment you've got all these little cool little rube goldberg things that are going to get them to this point and then they're naturally going to have to fight this guy and then there's going to be the fallout from that i can guarantee you that the moment your players start interacting with that they're going to go and players go left oh so that way then for me but that way for you so hey you know you choose anyway but players go left that's what players do and you don't want to have so much planned and in place that them not interacting with your plot is going to ruin it but let the world have natural consequences if my players and this is actually already in the etu book and i really like, appreciate that they thought ahead on this ed wetterman and his group they are great i'm glad they're part of pinnacle but um if you have your th whole thing planned if you are in uh, so what i was going to say though for etu with zombie mike if they don't destroy the shrunken head or kill zombie mike he's going to keep coming back every night and he's going to keep causing problems there on etu campus and be in a self-destructive behavior to a point where the the head will take over and will cause problems and that is why that is why you get involved with, with these things and let the world react to your players if for example you want your players to go rescue the princess and she's been taken and is being held hostage by the evil necromancer and he's going to come perform a necromantic spell on the princess and turn her into a zombie and you make sure that that's explained to your characters and your characters still say we want to go raid the goblin caves let them go raid the goblin caves because that princess is going to be a zombie and the zombie princess is going to cause problems for the the kingdom and because you didn't interact with it and you chose to interact with something else it's now your fault bubby you're gonna have to you're gonna have to make up for that you're gonna have to figure out how to solve this so plan a couple things that can be happening at the same time if you're if you're going to give them choices like that give them choices let them have choices but make them sophie's choice which for those of you who are teenagers and don't know who or what that is um you can look it up but the basic idea is you don't give them a choice between a good choice and a bad choice because hey if you say do you want to have ice cream or brussels sprouts most people are going to say ice cream however if i say your life depends on you picking the correct kind of ice cream now do you want chocolate or vanilla now there's an interesting choice because if there's if so what I did in creating the interesting choice, so I'm going to make sure that make sure that choice is um, part of the video title this time. But making that choice interesting, because if, if the choice was you're going to like it or not, I mean, that's an OK choice. But, you know, the result of the choice is, is important. So you give them a choice between two bads. You're going to have a princess turned into a zombie, or you're going to have a goblin horde attack the city. Now, instead of them just saying, we want to go attack the goblin horde just because it's fun and it's there and we can get lots of loot. Instead, now we're saying, okay, there's an imminent goblin horde attack, and there's the necromancer going to turn the princess into a zombie. And she's going to lead a horde of zombies back to the city. So now we're looking at a zombie attack or a goblin attack. Which attack are we going to let happen? now there's a stake in it there's a big stake and yes there we could totally have them figure out a way to 
repel the goblin invasion while they're handling the necromancer, come back with the freed people now who can swell the ranks of the army and you can push the goblins back and chase them back to their, their warren and defeat them all there and maybe find a plus one sword. Hooray! We did it! But that's not my problem as the game master, not your problem as the game master, to resolve that problem, to figure out how to do it. You can give them hands. Especially if they look like they're floundering. But you don't want to give them too many. And you want to make sure that they are the ones making the story. Because the story is what? It's an accounting of events that happen. We make the events. We are in the problem making department. We pull the pin on that problem grenade, throw it into the middle of the room, and see who throws their body on top of it. And when you are playing as a player, because I know that most of my acers out there are actually players, when you're playing as a player, go all in. Be the first to throw yourself on top of that grenade. Or dive down, grab it with your cool athletic character and throw it right back. But go all in. Do the thing that would be bet that your superheroic character would do at that moment. I'm not saying superheroic in the sense of a superhero, because hey, superheroes are awesome. And I grew up reading comic books, and so I you know, I, I totally am all for superheroes. I'm not gonna bash on superheroes at all. But I'm just saying in any game, be present, be there, and throw yourself in one hundred percent. And that same applies to the Game Master. If you get too reliant on an adventure that somebody else has written and don't kind of flex your imagination muscle just a little bit, you get it kind of turns out like Bugs did for me. But yet in the same campaign now, I've learned a very valuable lesson of grab the character. I grabbed Glenn Mac. He wasn't even in the story. And then... I decided that the head would need a ritual, a banishment ritual, to destroy it. They, they couldn't just physically destroy it. And now, I've created a scenario, an encounter, where my players are sweating bullets. And they're emotionally involved. So, until next time, Acers, I love you. You're awesome. People need you. We're gaming for good. I'll see you next time.